Okay, so we're going to talk about other means of carving because I'm sure if this is the first time you've tried carving, you're thinking, wow, that took forever. I don't want to do that again. So uh, I'm trying to cover everything so you know how to use all the tools and which ways are appropriate, but you're only going to know what's appropriate if I cover what's not appropriate. So at some point, someone's going to think this is a good idea, right? And when you're doing brute force carving, yeah, you can take your giant wire cutters and shave away the wax. But what I want to warn you of is when you carve like this, you've got to be very gentle because the compression of the wax tends to create fracture planes all the way through the wax. So when you do that, you can't actually get that close to your perimeter. So then when you do all that nibbling right, with your, your giant cutters, um, you realize it didn't actually get you any closer to what you're trying to do. So that brings us to the next method of breaking down our wax, where although this gets you relatively close, um, it doesn't really take any less time than the carving tool because you still have to carve back this entire region. So you're thinking, well, okay, now I've just created a different problem. And the worst part about this process, because it seems like instant gratification until you realize you have no good starting point to start carving now, because you're, you're trying to take your, your tiny carving tool and you're balancing on this shelf edge. And that's um, really frustrating to do. So if you don't have, if all you have right, is this little needle file, um, that's going to be your best friend. That's going to allow you to chase that back to something that you could actually deal with uh, with the carving tool, but there's still not going to be enough shelf for you to go through it the same way. So although it seems like it's faster, you just end up spending the same amount of time filing. So um, if you have a bigger file, like a heavier file, that's a good way to go. But we're talking like half round, bastard cut, huge file, like the one that they generally use for um, wood or metal. And just normally I'll file with the push stroke, but because of the way the camera is situated, this is the most appropriate way to do it. And the interesting part is, depending on who you talk to, there's this, this idea that, um, make sure I've got this right. Put the tang over here. So I'm, I'm pulling the wax against the file, so it's cutting. But depending on who you talk to, the idea is that um, <laughs> the wax will clog the file. And ironically, the wax generally lubricates the file for everything it's doing, whether it's filing uh, silver or uh, anything else. But you do need to, to get it, you know, to move across the surface. So what you don't want to do and start moving the wax back and forth so fast that it melts. Because then it's not going to cut. It's just going to be a, a freshly polished surface that can't get any purchase on what it's trying to cut. So um, This is generally a faster way to get down, but only if you're working with really thick material. So if I had hollowed out the back of my moon to maybe three millimeters thin, um, the amount of pressure I'm applying with my thumb, my ring, my index finger, and my middle finger are all too much, and they would snap this model in half. Right? It's still, still fairly thick. This is like maybe eight millimeters thick. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that means, that's five sixteenths of an inch. So yes, you can do the filing, but uh, no, it doesn't really save you any time. It's just a different approach. So uh, we'll cover what the jeweler saw is uh, at some point, and we'll cut off one of these lumps. And if I think of another technique that uh, works good for stock removal, we'll cover that as well. But we're trying to give you all the options depending on what you have available. But I remember very early on, when I was younger, much younger, especially in the head, very young in the head. You know, 
a jewelry instructor. Love her to death. Wonderful. She's like, you can try it. She knew. She's like, it's just going to take longer, but you won't know until you try. Um, and so generally, if you can show someone via time lapse or otherwise, um, then they know, okay, it's faster in this one respect. But uh, generally what works best is to start with the appropriate thickness and then gently carve or saw or file your way to your final part. Um, but uh, the wire cutters, they're meant to cut wire, not wax. I think you need something with a tooth to cut wax cleanly, and that's either, you know, these little, see if we can show this off to the camera, these little diamond textures here, those are the teeth of the file, um, and then, if you look at the jeweler's saw, uh, the blade itself has these, oh, let's take this out of the frame. Jeweler saw has these tiny little teeth. Let's see if we can get the camera to see that correctly. So if you look close, you can see there's tiny little teeth, and those cut great. And then there's just your carving tools, your pokey tools. And those are effectively right. That's just one tooth, right? Just one tooth. So the file it's just like hundreds of little teeth, right, nibbling away at what we're trying to accomplish. So this is a very relaxing way to do it. Um, it's a different type of strain on your hand. So if you have a large half round file or a bastard cut file, um, great. If you want to get one um, because you plan on doing a lot of stock removal, uh, if you're local to Seattle or Washington, um, they have a Tacoma screw around here. It's a great place to go. Uh, generally, any hardware store will have them. Uh, whatever your local hardware store is, has that sort of thing. And oftentimes, your arts and crafts areas will have it. You can also use a wood rasp. Those work the same way. So your local woodworking store will have them. But I like Tacoma Screw because they have a wide variety of files. They have this large half round file, uh, this extra cute tiny half round file. And then uh, I don't know if they, they carry needle files of this caliber. Usually you have to get those uh, from a jewelry supply store. So uh, that's a good way to go. But there it is. Took about seven minutes. And for the carving, the time lapse took much longer. I think I spent maybe 40 minutes doing the carving. But um, the carving takes less time the thinner you are. So there's more payoff when you're doing delicate stuff. And when you've got this beefy stuff, due to, we'll call it lack of planning as an improvised demo, um, it takes longer to do the carving step because you have all this material to go through. So as you increment your height, the thinner you go, the faster the carving works, and the worse your little cutters work. The thicker you go, the longer the carving takes, and the more appropriate it is, until your cutters can't cut that thick. And in all honesty, that's when you want to switch back to either a Japanese saw or a jeweler saw to recut your slab down the middle. And usually you can get two reasonable pieces of wax out of that. But we'll cover that later.